Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth kit. This time Star Wars. I'm going to do the Snow Speeder. Not the one from the new movie. I've already built that one. The one from Empire Strikes Back from Planet Hoff. Let's tear this thing open, see what's inside and what we're up against. The Snow Speeder from the Empire Strikes Back. And we have the instructions and our usual two sheets. Let's set this aside. Open up the instructions. We have two pieces. So it'll be eight pages. And if we look at that's page eight. So this is the last piece of piece of paper. Try again. And here we are, page one, and we start off with the little line diagram picture of the kit that we're going to build. We have some information about how to fold the lines and how to do deal with the tabs. There is the usual little bit here about needle nose pliers being helpful for assembly, and they are. And then we have our key or legend, if you will. The blue circle indicates when you see that in the directions that indicates to twist the tab 90 degrees where the green triangle I'm sorry back up the blue circle indicates to fold the tab over or bend the tab over 90 degrees where the green triangle is meant to twist the tab 90 degrees and down here you have a layout of the sheets Believe. Yep, there's that. And this. And you have all the numbers that point to the different parts. And you'll notice some of the parts are colored in. The parts that are the same color for the most part, although I have trouble sometimes distinguishing between the different shades of green, the different colors, for instance, here, these are all the same part. One of them is numbered, 11. They're not going to number every one. You know that the rest of these are part 11 because they're the same color. There's another one down here. This happens frequency, frequently with you know, two, the, a lot of things are symmetrical, at least to some degree. So you'll have a part on this arm that's the same as a part on that arm, or a part on this side that's the same as a part on that side. So there'll often be two parts, or this, which looks like one of the fins, on the back, it's just the same part over and over. If we open it up to page two, which opens this way. So we have the assembly flowchart, and we start with part one and two, and just follow the arrows across. Come down here to part three, four, follow across, five and six, and then we flip over. We have page three and page four, and it just continues. Just follow the red arrows. Sometimes they do like this, go down and go back. So pay attention. And then we have the second piece of paper, which we have five and six, and seven and eight, and then we're all done tools that you may need for building this kit. Long needle nose pliers or long nose pliers. I find these extremely useful. They're needle nose but these are a little bit longer than most of the ones I've ever used before. They're great for bending long thin parts, great for getting into hard to reach areas. I find them very useful. Flat nose pliers are also a good thing to have as well as probably one of the most important clippers. There's a lot of different clippers out there you can use. This set is one from Fascinations. These clippers work extremely well. I've tried other clippers. I've tried cuticle clippers. I've tried other um, flush clippers. Nothing else has worked as good as these. Your experience may be different. I also like to use a set of tweezers and this is the first time that I will be using these. It's a set that I just very recently picked up. Some precision tweezers. These have a very long point to them. These are a bit 
more of a dull edge and then these have an angle to them so we'll see how these work out but some sort of tweezers can be very handy in my opinion to do a lot of the things I frequently find it's useful to have some locking clamps these come in very handy for holding on to some small parts because they lock and then you can you don't have to worry with holding this together you can guide a party in or, or do certain things these sometimes come in quite handy they're also long and thin for getting into narrow areas I have some round nose pliers that are very good for shaping curved areas just clamp on the piece and kinda work it into whatever curve you need looking at the directions I can definitely see myself using this drill bit set not to drill any holes but to form long tubes or circles it's got a couple of guns on it I think some of these smaller ones are going to come in very handy anything that's rounded I have some step mandrels that come in handy I don't think these are going to be long enough for those guns you can get wooden dowel rods from the hardware store you can use things that you have around the house pens pencils sewing needles um, I have a large crochet yarn needle that I have been known to use this is just a very inexpensive drill bit set I wouldn't actually ever use these for drilling holes they are probably two or three dollars and the discount bin of some off-the-wall hardware store I've had them for so long and I've never actually used them until I started building these kits and sometimes you run into curved parts so it's good to have some marbles or beads things that you can use to curve and shape dome shaped round shaped pieces I also like to have some sort of knife not so much for cutting but because of the thin blade you can reach in and get in and sometimes bend parts over or pry them apart so that you can get to them with other tools we have our instructions we have our metal sheets and we have some tools to use let's put this thing together Once I bend over the tabs, I like to, if possible, pinch them with tweezers or pliers to make them more secure. I could not get one of the tabs with flat tweezers because it was so close to another part, but was able to get it with the pointed tweezers. Normally I would have to pull out a knife to pry the tab away so that I could get to it, but I didn't have to. So far I'm liking my new tweezers. The instructions tell you to place part 10 fifth from the left and seventh from the left, but it does not say from the left of what. They are referring to the empty slots, the fifth empty slot and the seventh empty slot from the left. Or you could find the middle slot and put parts 10 on either side of the middle. Make sure you place the single tab sticking out from the back both towards the lower half.
Placing parts on like these fins and getting them tight enough to not move is tricky, and I failed with several of them, so I cooked up a plan. After I attached them all, I sat the part fin down, separated all the fins with a piece of wire ties, and then ran some hot glue across the tabs. Once that cooled, it did a pretty good job of holding the fins in place. I should have bent the back a little different. There's one section I should have used pliers to hold both sides steel, but instead just used it for one side and bent the window just a little. Be sure to bend the tabs a little more so that they line up with the slots. If you leave them at an angle, they will not line up. Not very much of the tabs stuck through on the back, but I carefully twisted what did. I put a small hook into the tab to make it easier to work it into a slot. When rounding a part, I often start with a rod or drill bit that is a little bigger than I need and work my way down in size. With the barrel of the gun, I was a little more careful. The metal is perforated and bends easier than I expected, and I found the perfect size drill bit. I used a 3 32nd size bit, rolled the piece on the table with the bit inside, and it worked out perfectly. You will need to use something to pry the tab away from the barrel of the gun so you can twist them. In the past, I have used an X-Acto knife, but my new precision tweezers work well.
Repeat the last few steps for the other gun or you could build them together. In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build. Be sure to bend two tabs on the shorter side rather than twist them. It will be a clearance issue later. I secured three tabs, but there is a fourth at the back that I missed. I missed it on both sides. That will cause me problems in the end. Remember to fold two of the tabs over instead of twisting them. area here is pretty tight. I had to bend the forward tab out a little to allow it to slide into its slot.
As usual, the task of getting the two halves together is challenging. It was at this point that I realized I missed the two tabs in the back of the side pieces. Reluctantly, I decided to pull the two halves apart and fix the problem. The snow speeder. This is probably not one of my better kits. I had a lot of trouble with the fins on the back. I usually can get parts to stay still by twisting them, but for some reason I couldn't get hardly any of these to stay put. So what I did, as you can see, was just line them up the best I could after getting all the tabs twisted and then pouring a little bit of hot glue on there. And it helped a lot. It's not perfect, but it allowed me to bend and shape things a little bit better than before and then mostly stay in place. I had some new tools in this kit. I bought some new tweezer set, a professional or pro set I think it was called and I can put a link down in the description to where I got it off of Amazon. There's like a 15 piece set but I only used like three of the ones that came in the kit and I like them. There's one that's kind of a rounded edge and I liked that one a lot at first but then I got to where I wanted to switch back to the standard tweezers with kind of a flat edge. The ones with the pointed edge was really nice that they could get into tight areas and it kept me from having to use the hobby knife or blade as much. In the end, not a too, too difficult kit. As far as the Star Wars kits go, it's right about on average. After doing War Machine, it certainly made this kit look a bit easier. But it's, it's, not, it's not too terrible, it's not too easy, I wouldn't start with it, but if you've done a few kits, you can probably do this one just fine. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.